Retirement planning is why you must choose a good husband. Ladies, happy Friday. This is a really, really, really quick video I want to do. I have a few more videos I'm going to try to do today. Uh, OJ Simpson and the fresh and fresh and fit, fresh and well, whoever out here busting up in women without protection. Anyways, happy Friday. Good morning to you. Thank you for your love and support. Be sure to uh, subscribe. Uh, comment below. Uh, let me know what you think. I absolutely love you. I adore you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. I wanted to do a quick video on retirement uh, planning, on, on, on showing you ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who's watching, why it's important for you to choose a good mate, a good husband. Most of my subscribers are ladies. And this is why you cannot make choosing your husband an emotional decision. Because your husband is supposed to be with you forever. When you get married, you're supposed to live the rest of your life with your husband. My husband and I, we've been married going on 11 years. And uh, we're both getting ready to retire in a, in a few years. And um, one of the things we're doing, aka I'm doing, is looking at our retirement planning and when we're going to retire, the date we're going to retire, the year we're going to retire. But one of the most important things is which bucket of money are we going to pull from first? Let me say that again. One of the most important things I'm doing, we're doing, is looking at which bucket, bucket of money are we going to pull from first. Social security is an afterthought because when I was in school, we were told we weren't going to get it. Okay. My husband, he's in his 50s. He'll get it. I'll probably get a little something, but that's not even... Uh, we're not even calculating Social Security in uh, in our our planning because um, we planned differently for our retirement. And I'm looking at the buckets of money that we have, and I'm not showing off because some people think when you share, you're showing off. I'm not showing off. I'm trying to educate. And I'm trying to help people and especially black people who always want to cry victim versus sitting down and learning about finances, learning about money, learning about your life, learning about life plan and how to plan your life accordingly, that every decision you make is a decision that will affect your life. And I'm looking at the different buckets of money we have. And I wanted to cry. I wanted to cry because I thought to myself, what if I did not choose a good husband? What if my husband didn't choose a wise and virtuous woman? I think we would be okay individually, but together we are doing excellent. And I wanted to cry. And, uh, you know, a lot of the ladies, a lot of the ladies I started with, I'm talking about, hey, I'm retiring in so many years. And they're like, how are you going to retire? You're just going to be like 50, 51, 52 when you retire. You can't afford to retire. And then somebody said something that I almost wanted to answer. Well, you have a husband. And I had to ha I had to hold my mouth because you know you know when you're about to say something you shouldn't say, and I thought to myself that this person I wanted to say yeah you've been married twice and you chose wrong two times we gonna overlook the first time but you can't tell me you chose wrong the first time and went back and chose wrong the second time and now when I'm talking about retiring you talk about I have a husband I got married at thirty five. That's old to be getting married. But when I got married at 35, I was already 
preparing for my retirement 10 years ago from the time I was 24, my first job out of college. My first job out of college at 24 years old. And yeah, I graduated late because my birthday's late in New Jersey. Your birthday's late. So you, it's like you're a year behind, okay? And then I had a child, so I couldn't take as many courses I wanted to take. So I just stretched it out so I'm, I'm not stressed. So that's why I graduated at 30, 24. I started to prepare for my retirement at 24 years old. Why? You need to look at your life, your whole life. You don't need to look at your life. I'm 18, I'm 19, I'm partnering it up, I'm drinking it up. The the the, the people the kids I went to school with at 18 and 19, they are my age, 47, 50, still trying to get student loan cancellation. When we were all in the Bursar's office together and they were pushing those student loans. 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, and they were signing their names on those loans to go buy cars and jewelry and sneakers and rent apartments they could not afford. And they said, Janice, you could get this. And I said, no, thank you. I pushed it back. No, I don't want it. I don't want no debt. I just need enough to pay for what I need to pay for. And probably took a little extra for books and stuff. But no, thank you. I am not going to get myself in debt because debt is a curse. And you know, we talk about good debt, bad debt. And my friends that I went to school with, every last one of them at 47 and 50, I am, I'm 46. I'll be 47 in, in, in October are still crying about student loans and how they don't know what they're going to do for retirement. I have girls that I started my job with, this job, at 26. And I'm signing up for that 457. Take it out. And I'm saying, girl, you need to sign up for this. For I can't afford it. And now 20 years later, Janice is getting ready to retire in a few years. And they're saying, well, I can't retire until I'm 65 because I can't afford it. But Janice, you can afford it because you have a husband. No, I can't afford it because I have a husband. I can afford it because I made the sacrifice. That when the 457 man come, we call him Mr. 457. It was a lady first. I sign up. And every time they came, I added $10. And if they come three times a year, add another $10. And 20 years later, because I've been preparing for my retirement, I can retire at 51, 52, and live on my savings that I've been sacrificing for for 25 years. That's why I'm retiring. I can retire and I can afford to retire. Do I have a husband? Yes, I do. Do I have a great husband? Yes, I do. I chose a great husband. I chose a man who was also preparing for his retirement. Because in order for me to marry my husband and accept his proposal, he had to take me to his job. I want to see your W-2 from the HR. I don't want you to bring it to me. Take me over there. Let me see it. I want to see your retirement planning. Because if you want to be my husband, you need to show me that you've been preparing to be a husband, but you're also prepared for retirement. I need to see your savings. I need to see your investments. 
if he had none of those things, I would not have married my husband. I married my husband. One of the reasons I married him was because he was preparing himself. And ladies, this is why I keep telling you, it is not an emotional decision. When I say your husband is a choice, your husband determined the rest of your life, that's what I mean. When I say your husband is the second most important decision you will ever make, that is what I mean. My husband will not have to pull his social security until he's 70. Because at 70 years old, you get the max. And he don't have to because we've been sacrificing and saving and investing. And I know when I say invest, black people like to say, well, we don't know. We don't know how to increase. You know, you know how to save. We always have an excuse. The same excuse my friends had when we were at Essex County and Rutgers and those bursars loan officers was pushing those 30, 40, 50,000 dollars a semester per semester. And they signed it because they weren't thinking about the rest of their life. I know kids who graduated from Essex County College, a two-year college, with $100,000 in student loans. That is a two-year college. This was in the late 90s. While you're graduating from a two-year college with a $100,000 student loan, and classes was like $5,000. I don't remember the number. Why? They were signing on those loans to take out student loans, to go buy cars, rent apartments they can't afford, buy purse and shoes. I know students who graduated from Rutgers University. Okay, it's a four-year university with 200,000 loans. Why? When the bursars loan officers push it before that, they signed it to go take out apartments they can't afford, house they can't afford, cars and shoes and bags and purses. And Janice says, no, thank you. I want, I'm going to stay in my one, a studio apartment. I stayed in a studio apartment my whole college education. Me and Lexi slept in a full-size bed until she was eight. One room. That room was, was, was not as big as my dining room. And I took my 322 I used to get from welfare, $322. That was, Lexi's 30. That was 28 years ago. And uh, paid my rent. Work, work, study. My rent, thank God for Mr. Shaw. I never forgot that man. God bless him. He never raised my rent for four years. For three years, he was there. He was like, he never raised my rent. He said, you're a young lady. I see you're trying. I'm not going to raise your rent. You pay me $380 a month. $300 a month. Always had light. Always had my phone. And I stayed in that one room apartment. And my friends I went to school with were taking out loans to go get big apartments they couldn't afford. My first job out of college, <clears throat> I moved and got a one bedroom, gave Lexi the one bedroom. I slept in the living room on a futon. And my first job out of college, when the, the, the people will say, you ladies want to sign up for, for a 401k? We match 5%. It was me. And two little white girls stood up in the line to go sign up for the 401k at 24 years old. And when I got the job that I have now, that started me at 50 in my late in my late 20s, when the 457 men come, y'all want to sign up for your 457? I was the only one in line out of a class of 26 black kids, black people. Out of a class of 
26. Young black people. There's some of them were older. They were old enough to be my moms. I was the only one that went and signed up for the Lincoln man to start taking out. I think I started with $50. And every time they came, it was a Lincoln lady at that time, the fourth settlement. Every time they came, I added 50. And 20 years later, I'm getting ready to retire. And all the people I went in with now are, how are you retiring? That's how I'm retiring. Your life, and I blame the black church for this. You need to have a life plan for your life. You need to plan your life out from 18, 19 until the way to the grave. You need to plan it out. My husband and I, which buckets are we going to pull from? 401k, you have to sign up for it. But you have to make the sacrifice that I'm going to be missing some money. But babe, Dave Ramsey says, you sacrifice today for tomorrow. How? Huh. 457 is voluntary, but you have to sacrifice today for tomorrow. Saving and planning for your future and your retirement is a sacrifice and a choice, but that's a sacrifice and a choice you have to make for your future. But ladies, I warn you, do not marry a man who has not started to plan for his life. This is why I'm not for 20 something getting married because they're young. They're just graduating from college. They might not have landed that big boy, big girl job yet. And so you don't know. That's why I think you need to give time for especially men to become established and explain his plan and his vision for his life. Ask my husband when he retired. Mike, when you retire, you know what Mike going to say when Jan is telling me to retire? You must plan your life out. It's a sacrifice. Eleven years ago, my husband could afford a five hundred thousand dollar house. You know what I did? I got a two fifty house. We drive one American car truck. We live way below our means. Why? Because we are planning our life out. When little Michael get college age, he will never. Be able to say, oh, I want to go to college and my mama don't have the money. You will never hear me cry. What am I going to do? Because from the moment he was born and I, we got his social security number, we called the 529 man, sign him up for that 529. So when I say, ladies, plan your life out. Your husband is a choice. Choose wisely. That is what I mean. I have to go. Let me know what you think. These are my books. If you want to show me love and support, come on back. I'm going to try to do another one or two videos today because I know I owe you guys some videos. The fresh, fresh and fit guy I have to do. And um, the husband profile course begins tomorrow. Ooh, talk about planning your life and choosing the right husband, girl. The My Husband Profile course begin tomorrow. So next year, next year, I'm going to pre-record it so you could just have the class because I have so many ladies want to sign up, but they just cannot because the time is not working up. I absolutely love you, my darlings. Let me know what you think. Are you planning for your retirement? Are you prepared for your retirement? I'll be retiring in a few short years. My husband, he's ready to retire. He said, whenever you tell me to retire, I'll retire. And Social Security is nowhere on, on our plan. That's the last bucket we're going to pull from. Well, Mike's going to pull from because we're going to wait till he get he can get the max. 
but we can wait till he get the max because we we're not dependent on social security. We have our 457, we have our 401k, we have our savings, we have our investment that we can live on. I love you. I'll uh let me know what you think in the comment below. Talk to you later. Bye.